Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday morning, everybody. It sure is good to be back. It feels like I've been out of the Creative Soul Pated Journey sister group for quite some time. Even though I've been watching everybody, I haven't been actually seeing my beautiful face on screen. But I am really jazzed to be back here on a Saturday morning. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday morning. As you come on, if you would please, uh, you know, do the normal thing. Give some comments. Tell me where you're from. Uh, show me some love. Oh, Mary, Tammy's right there on the spot. <laughs> She's like Johnny on the spot. Good morning, honey. So um, as just a little housekeeping thing with me, anybody who doesn't know, I have a studio that's actually like a little she shed. It's a uh, it's separated from my house and sometimes I have some external noise going on and I have an oak tree above my ceiling. So if you hear a little poppy noise here and there, that's some of just the leaves and things falling down, but just <laughs> so you know what that's about. Anyway, oh, hey, Pam, good morning. Good morning, ladies. That's everybody's, um, is everybody up and about or are they still kind of waking up or getting the sleepies out of their eyes? Good morning, sunshine. Ah. I wish I felt like sunshine. My day's been a little, the last couple of days have been a little bit stressed, but I'll tell you about that as we go along. But we're just going to hop right into this thing. Uh, Melanie's here too. Aw, good morning, sweetheart. I bet it's a little chilly up there. I bet you guys are starting to get some cold weather, huh? I'm still enjoying this Florida weather. I got my shorts on. We're going out today and go go-karting and all kinds of fun things. Steffi too. Awesome, girls. Thank you so much for joining in. Okay, so uh, this morning, you know, I'm starting to think about Christmas. And I, with Christmas with me, I mean, I love all the regular stuff everybody else does. But I really love the the uh, the remembrance of Jesus and, you know, um, all the heavenly things, you know, related to the Christmas season. So not that I'm getting too spiritual today, but I thought we'd do something with angels. A lot of people do think I know Shars does a lot of angel stuff, but I'm doing my own take here with uh, my little clay girl. So this one here, you guys saw the picture. She's actually made out of polymer clay. And I know some of you ladies are familiar with polymer clay because I've done a few pieces, but I'm going to show you some unique things that we can do. I've got some fun gadgets we're going to be using to make her because she's a little bit different with her drape and her wings and her hair and whatnot so get a little closer there okay all right so um i'm going to go ahead and switch my screen off and we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this thing let me see where i'm at here it's this one here i believe one two three four yeah this guy here all right so, like I said, I'm going to bring this up on the big screen so we can see a little bit more than that. So, okay, polymer clay. I'm working with Sculpey, all right? This is the Sculpey 3, and it's the it's pretty soft Sculpey. I've talked about this before. It's very, very pliable, and it's really user-friendly. Um, although, to me, I like a firmer clay, and when I do some of the other projects, then um I will be using that, but right now we're focusing on the Sculpey because it's a pretty easy clay to work with. Okay, so we have several elements. I uh, said so your guardian angel is beautiful. I know, isn't she pretty? I just really love the way she turned out. And like I said, you guys are going to see how I do this and we will paint her up. And I've got a couple paint options that you ladies can help me on decide which way I want to go. Um, anyway, okay, so the first thing we need to do with her is make her wings. Now, here's a really simple thing that you can do. You take a little cookie cutter, all right, a um, little heart shape. needs to be. Or if you don't have a cookie cutter, you could actually just do a heart shape in paper and cut the paper out and then just do a template and just cut around it that way. But if you got the cookie cutter, then you're already good to go. Now, I kind of pre-rolled and got everything set up for the sake of time. Um, and I know we've got three girls that are presenting. We've got Melanie's coming after me, and then we got Terry Woodham's coming after that. So I gotta got keep on our time schedule with everybody here. But okay, so I'm taking my little brayer roller here, and I'm gonna roll this out, even though I've got it a little bit of a, I think it's a little bit too thick. It's not crazy thick, but I'm just gonna go ahead and roll it out a little bit more, make it a little thinner. And like I said, you can use a brayer. You can use, um, this is another like little roller here I've got from Hobby Lobby, little acrylic roller. And you can use a rolling pin, anything like that, or even the 
uh, a glass. And how many of you guys have actually used a, a glass making biscuits? I've done that many times that I couldn't find a roller. All right, so another thing to keep in mind though, when you're working with polymer clay, and you probably can't see that, but when you're up close to it, you can see these little air bubble pockets that happen. When the, when the clay is kind of sitting on it and you start rolling it out, they come to the surface. And if you see those, it's good. And, you know, they're kind of hard to avoid when using this clay. But if you see them, I just kind of roll them out. I just kind of poke them with a, a pen or, you know, my little exacto or anything like that and just kind of get those out of there. Because what will happen is when you bake it, it will show up. Okay. All right, so I'm just kind of rolling this out a little bit more. Generally, when I roll these things and I'm doing a slab, which is what this is called, um, I will have my little guides on the side to give it more of the same um, thickness throughout the piece because what it does, it, it's like little rulers or whatever, and you have a bigger rolling pin on the side of that, and it keeps it the same thickness throughout. But I mean, I'm just kind of winging it today because I can pretty much see it visually how thick I want it to go. All right, so I think we're pretty good on the angel. Well, it still looks a little thick to me. All right, so it said my guardian angel is beautiful, Steffi. Thank you so much. Yeah, like I said, I do believe she turned out pretty good, and I hope you guys like, um, you ladies like this one this morning. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut her out. These are the wings. This is a really super fun, easy way to do wings, by the way. All right, so I've got my little heart shape here. Put that to the side. All right. Now, I always do this and forget, but I could have done this before I cut it out. And that's the best thing to do because you've got the whole thing. But what I'm going to do is you can see on um, these wings here, you can see the texture I've got. It's a really cool design. You can actually use either. Um, I'm going to use this really awesome doily. It's a very open weave doily and it works really great. Um, if you have a stencil or even a stamp of some sort some, like that, you can roll over it just to something to give it a little bit of decoration. And this one, I'm just laying over it and I can do a slight roll on this one. This is so open weave, it doesn't take much. But you just want to make sure you cover all your areas. One thing nice about doing this with the clay is you can kind of pull it back and look and it won't, as opposed to like paper when you're trying to do it with a uh, paint, you know, if you, you can kind of lose your place. But when you're doing it with clay, it works pretty good. And there you go. See how nice and pretty that is? Okay. I got a little off center, but it doesn't matter because it's angel wings and they're going to be behind her anyway. I just want a little something with texture. Now, what we're going to do is, um, can anybody guess what we're going to do to make the wings? <laughs> it might be pretty obvious, but I need to get my little cutter. I've misplaced my dang butter knife somewhere, and I could just get one out of the cabinet, but I, I mean, out of my drawer, but I forgot when I was coming in here this morning. Uh, great idea to use the fabric. Yes, absolutely. That's that's definitely one way. There's lots and lots of ways to create texture with clay. I mean, you can even use pasta. Any little buttons, any little trinkets, old jewelry found pieces, and you just press them in there and make some really cool stuff. You can even make your own stamps with like hot glue designs and put them on um um, what do you call them? Corks. I know Steffi's got a lot of corks. And just press those in. There's lots and lots of ways to get your designs in your clay. All right. So basically what I'm doing here, like if anybody hasn't guessed yet, I'm just going to cut this heart in half right down the middle. All right. Ta-da. And we've got a pair of wings just like that. That's cool, huh? It's nice and easy. This one, I wish I would have had my butter knife. It would have been a little smooth there. I'm working off a silicone mat because it, it's, I have glass underneath here and it kind of glares when I do um, in the camera. So I've got the silicone mat on here and I didn't want to cut my mat up with a sharp edge like something like this, which I've already experienced and done. So that's why I want to use a dull edge. And that's a, that's a hint for anybody else or a tip for anybody else that is trying to cut on a silicone mat. Don't use a really sharp edge. Learn from me. Okay, so... We've got the wings. Now, the wings are actually going to be the gauge for the rest of her body as far as proportion goes. All right. So the next thing I need to do is I need to make like a little um, kind of like a little triangle piece. It's basically going to be like uh, a little piece that'll sit for her kind of like her chest bone and like her head will kind of sit on there as well. <clears throat> so it's not too hard to do. I just sort of like gauge it like this. Put it on here and, and kind of do a little cut out of what I need. All right, so I'm just going to sort of eyeball it like that. 
and it'll be a little, it'll be smaller than this, I think. I don't think I'm going to need all this clay. So how's everybody Saturday going? What you guys got planned this morning? Doing something family oriented? Or are you just kind of chilling out at home? Or, you know, what's your weather like? I mean, you know, let's, let's pipe in and get some, get some um, like weather updates, I guess, from everybody's region. How about that? <laughs> We are going to talk a little bit about angels, too. I, I, I like to uh, hear everybody's take on angels. I looked up a few facts. I know a few biblical facts about angels, but I am curious to see what everybody else has to say or their take on angels as well. So anyway, yeah, so I've just got this little piece right here. And actually, I don't like it like that. It needs to be a little bit bigger. And I don't even need it this pointy. I'm just going to kind of cut it down like that. All right. And basically, like I said, I'm going to leave a little bit of this open so that I can use it. Wait a minute. I think I put it on top, didn't I? I can't miss it. Did I put it on top? Did I put it on top or bottom? I put it on bottom. My bad. Okay. My bad. So the wings go like that. All right. And then, like I said, this is just a little bit for her. So I see if some of her chest. Okay. So on the back end, you can imagine this doesn't look as pretty as it should. And when I get to the presenter's magic one that we're going to paint, then I will show you what I mean. But right now, this is assembling it together. And if a person wanted to finish off the back, you could easily turn it over and put something on the back. Which reminds me, before I continue assembling it, what I'm going to do to make it easy for the person and uh, when you're handling this, because the final thing with this, well, final thing is painting it. But um, to be able to harden it up, we have to bake it in the oven. So to transfer this onto a baking dish, it's best to have it under a piece of aluminum. Now, I've got a piece of aluminum foil here. And I think this should be big enough. It might be a little bit glary in the camera. hope it won't be too bad for you ladies. But um, this way, when we build it on here, we can literally just pick it up and just place it on our uh, baking dish. Okay. All right, so there we go. There's her wings. I mean, yeah, her wings and her chest, her chest bone. Now what we need to do is her head. All right, so to gauge her head, I've got just a little ball here. I already pre-made the ball, and it's simply, you know, rolling it in your hands or rolling it on your mat. You're to try to get it in a ball shape. You want to get it as clean as possible. And, you know, you can kind of gauge it proportionately from her from her wing size. Matter of fact, I'm going to put her wings out a little bit more. You kind of want to space them out enough so you can see them when we get everything else on. And I, I think that's a pretty big head, you guys. I'm going to take that head down a little bit. I don't know. Who, who, who's who got a big head? <laughs> Steffi says she's still organ stuff in the studio. How are you feeling, girl? Are you back 100% or are you still out a little bit? Let me see. I'm going to go over here because, like I said, I had my phone set up and it went out on me. I'm going to set that up so I can see the comments because I can't always see them on StreamYard. And I've still been yet to figure that one out why I cannot do that. But I did have my phone going. Here I am. Okay. So we got for comments. Oh, I need to shut myself up, though, don't I? Nope. Be quiet, Kim. Hold on a second. I got to shut myself down. There I am. Okay. Now, maybe I can see some of the comments that I cannot see in StreamYard. I'm still noisy. Why well, can't I shut myself off? All right. Anyway. All right. Comments. Oh, there. Okay. Now I think I got it going. Technical difficulty. Okay, Jan, I didn't even see you. Jan's watching. Melanie. All right. Snowy. Yeah. Oh, it's snow in there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I heard that they were going to get some snowfall going on. Oh, do you like the snow? You like the snow, Melanie? I don't know. I'm, I'm not much. I, I like to look at it. I don't like to be in it too much. <laughs> Steffi said she's about 80% in the energy. Wasn't quite bad. Yeah, just feeling much better. Okay. Aw. Well, you know what? Um, you're going to get there. You're young strong butt girl and you'll get there so um but yeah just it's a nice day to just sort of hang out if you don't have anything major going on but we're gonna actually gonna go out and have some fun because i've had a pretty crazy schedule the last couple days and i might get into that later but okay let's get back to our angel because that is one of the reasons we're on here i mean we can 
chat all day long. If you want to chat all day long and create, come on our Live Sister Painting Hood group on Wednesday nights, and we can definitely do some of that, right, girls? <laughs> I like the snow. It's just not the long winter. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I can visit in snow now. I've lived in snow country several times, but I don't know, just the practicality of it, you know, having to wear heavy clothes and the pushing shopping carts to the snow when I did that one time in Connecticut. And I'm like, uh uh, I'm done with that. I'm not doing that anymore. All right. So, okay. So we've got wings. We've got her head, which I think is the right proportion size now to to um, the wings. Now, here's one of the really cool things we're going to do. The really fun things we're going to use some gadgets in is um, making her hair and her little uh, robe drape. And that's pretty cool to do. So what I've got, I just got one of these recently. Um, if a person doesn't have one of these, this is called an extruder, ex not extruder, extractor. And of course, you know, you can use this for like making fondant or bake uh, pastries and things like that. But it also works great for clay. A little cheapy guy off Amazon. I think this one was like 11 bucks. It comes with a lot of different tips um, on the end, which I had in my baggie of all my goodies. But it has a lot of different uh, tip ends here that you can use. This one I'm using the very fine one that um, to pull. We're going to make hair strands with this one. And before uh, I got this, the old school method is literally to roll them out really small and then put them on there. This is like a really quick, fun way to do it. So what you do, you know, I've got this thing rolled out as far, about as far as it can get. And I make me like a little strand of like, I always call these hot dogs, like a little, um, uh, just a big, long, what do you call it? Um, can't think of the name of it right now, Kim. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. You can see what I look at. So this is what we're going to do. We're basically just going to turn this and watch this little cool magic come out. Let's see. It has to kind of like squish down in there enough to where it starts seeding and getting out. But here we go. It's going to start coming out in a minute. Yay, here we go. And then as I do this, you guys can see, let me switch over sides. Let's pull this over this way. Now you can see it a little bit better as it comes out. And it's kind of neat because as it comes out, it's sort of like twisting and turning and, and making it like little hair strands, which makes it really great. And talk about ease and quickness. This is the way to go if you're doing hair. <laughs> and of course, you can do other things with this. You can coil these up. That's what I was trying to think. That little bag fat thing that I just put in there is called coiling. My brain's a little bit off this morning. It always is on the mornings. Anybody seen me on a Saturday morning knows that the end of my week, my brain's a little fried. Grown up play doh exactly. <laughs> yeah, Mel, it's what it is. Oops, I got a little goofy on that one. I wasn't paying attention. I got a little knot. She's got her knot in her hair there. We'll see if I use that point. I can always cut that out. I'm just going to go as far as I can with this. And uh, what I don't need, I won't use. But I can make some really long hair with this puppy. All right. Actually, I think that's pretty good. I don't think I'm going to get any further than that. All right. So at that point, I'm just going to just going to cut it off. I've got a little bit more left in there. So, yeah, I think I'll probably cut that little that little knot piece out in there. I wasn't paying attention. I was too busy reading Melanie's comments. All right. So, yeah, we're going to put her hair. Actually, I'm going to do her hair last. That looks kind of cool. I like the knot. I might keep it on there and make it like a little bit of put a bow or something on it or maybe not. Actually, okay, so we got her hair, but I'm thinking that I really need to do her robe first and we'll do her hair last. But there you guys got to see how we did her hair. That's pretty darn cool, huh? All right, now, um, for her robe, this is a really cool part, too. So over here, touch it up next to me, I've got myself a little pasta maker. All right, you can get these. There we go. See, excuse my messiness. I've got so much around me with this project. It takes a lot of little goodies. Um the pasta maker, you can buy these for like 25 bucks, something like that off Amazon if you want to get one. I actually scored this one on the in the Goodwill for like seven bucks, but it didn't have the handle on it. So I had to buy the handle separately on Amazon, but still it was a good deal. So what I'm going to do with this is just run it through the pasta maker. And I hope you guys can see this. I think you can. On the big screen, you'll be able to see this. So it, what it does, it just creates that little flat um, piece of clay. Just kind of flattens it out. And when you're using, uh, when you're first using certain clays, they need to be conditioned. 
when you're using this particular clay, it's so um, soft. You don't have to worry about doing that because you could actually knead it with your hands and condition it. Conditioning basically means that you're just getting it to where you can work with, making it pliable and softer. When you're using a firmer clay, you definitely, especially like the Sculpey Super, it's very firm and hard in the beginning. And so you need to run it through the pasta maker to be able to thin it out like this and then just kind of work it. It's a lot user friendly. So what I did with this, as you can see, I folded it over a couple times. I got a couple of folds on it and you want to make sure that when you're doing this, that the fold goes this way into the pasta maker so that it keep get some of those air bubbles out. Okay. Plus it, it gives me like the thickness or the width that I need for doing her little robe, her gown or robe or whatever you want to call it. All right. So there, see, I probably should have cleaned the darn thing before I did this. It's getting a little sticky. All right, so that's pretty cool, huh? I've got a nice big slab there. All right, so let me see if this is going to be what I need. Oh, I don't like that. It's just not looking too pretty and clean. But you know what? The whole idea of this one is sort of like her robe is a little rough. It's not like she's all that. It's a little torn and tattered. Not that I'm trying to say that, that she's, a, she's a wayward angel by any means but it's just kind of like more of a distressed kind of look that I'm going for with her robe so I'm going to run this through one more time actually I'm going to take my cloth and clean it because it's kind of getting a little bit sticky on there and see if I can get it clean which I should apologize for that I should you guys ever have one of those mornings when or even one of the days when you're trying to present and you just kind of like didn't have everything together I mean I literally threw this together with like the last 45 minutes before I came alive because I had some of it set up, but I didn't have my camera set up and all that stuff. So I was just kind of like, Ooh, I had seven minutes to spare. I did pretty good. I think. Oh, all right. So I'm just going to go and go with that. It's a little bit rough on her gown, but I don't mind, you know, I don't mind that as far as the texture goes. So you can see, I've got this big long slab right now, and this is what's going to create her robe and her sleeves okay with the part of it too let me pull this up you can see this pretty good so all i'm doing here is i'm going to create like a little bit of a neck oh, i hope that's not too glary let me know if that's too glary i'll try to adjust my camera there that might help a little bit i think i took some of the glare off that way all right so i just kind of turned it over a little bit to create a neckline here and then i'm sort of going like with the shape of her wings we want to cut this down because it's going to kind of be her shoulders. All right. So I'm just going to kind of angle that cut right there. All right. Because we do need to still put her, um, her sleeves on. Okay. And angle that cut right there. All right. And then this is a little bit too much. I don't like all that. I'm going to cut all that off too. All right. So I did like, I just kind of rolled it over a little bit to get a little bit of definition with her um, gown there all right so now what we want to do we've kind of got it sort of nice and long like this but we want to create like a drape and the way i did that was simply just pick it up and kind of move it around a little bit okay just kind of create a drapey feel to it turn around hey leah how are you glad you're checking in with me we're in the, I'm in the middle of making this polymer clay angel. Yeah, I've just showed some different techniques, how to do the hair and, and how to do her little robe is what I'm working on right now and how to create a drape. This is a really sticky clay. I need to get my cornstarch out so I can grab it because it sticks to your hands very much. It's much easier to use when you use the cornstarch because it helps. Um, it's like flour with biscuits. It doesn't stick to your hands so much. All right, so for the drape, I'm just sort of doing this number. I'm going to cut it off. How long should you think I should make it? How long should she be? I don't think I want to make her. I'll make her this long, but let's see. I think I'll probably cut it off. And I'm just going to do an angle on this. Um, yeah, we'll make her a little bit, her, her drape a little bit longer. I'm not doing anything specific. I'm just sort of do like a little bit of a, of a rough cut. Because like I said, this is sort of a rough, distressed sort of looking little gal anyway. All right, so the drape, I'm just kind of doing this sort of number. Just drape it to where you feel like it looks kind of cool. Drape it on the bottom a little bit. 
Now, like I said, this clay is not as firm as some of the other clay. Is that glaring too much? She's a rustic angel. That's the word I need. Yes, thank you. She's a rustic angel. Yeah, she's been serving a lot of people, this angel. She's, she needs a vacation. She's a little rustic, but she still looks beautiful, <laughs> just like some of the rest of us, right? We still look beautiful, and we still are beautiful on the inside and out of the earthly angels that we are. All right, so yeah, so that's kind of it. I'm going to push this up a little bit here on the sides. Like I said, her sleeves are getting ready to go on, so you're not going to see that too much. Okay, and then that's kind of it. I'm going to leave it like that for now. I can kind of change it a little bit if I need to once I get it, once I get the, um, once I get the, what you call it, son, the sleeves. Okay, now for the sleeves, basically what I'm going to do, let me change this over here, is I'm going to, where's my little dull edge guy again? How's it that I never can find what I need when I'm actually teaching you guys and it's all over the place when I'm not? <laughs> Anybody ever have that experience too? All right, so I'm just going to cut it like a diagonal, like a triangle shape. Yeah, I'm just kind of cutting like a triangle shape. I need two triangles. All right. Okay, and this is a very rough edge here, but I kind of like that rough edge. That's part of what I'm going to go with. I'll cut this little part off here, but... Yeah, and then, of course, you can always form it with your fingers if you need a little space to, I mean, if it's not exactly what you need. All right, so but on the triangles, I'm just going to roll them over like that. All right. And this is where sometimes if you need, you can get like a, something like this, kind of like a back of a, a brush, like a big fat brush or something just to kind of hold it and support it while you're working with it. And I'm simply pressing it. This would be like the seam or like the back of her uh, sleeve. Okay. It doesn't have to look all that pretty because you're really not going to see it, but we just want to make sure that we press it on there enough to where it um, sticks. All right. And this stuff has got a lot of stickability. So see even that little rough edge right there. I really like that. All right, let's see where I need to put it on here if I need to cut anything on here. All right, so that's actually doing pretty good. Let me get that close so you can see. All right, so that's one sleeve right there. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and kind of cut that off. And then attaching it, I'm simply doing the same thing. I'm just kind of pressing it on there. Um, you can use a tool like this. It's kind of like a little silicone. It's very soft. And kind of do that number and it sort of smooths it out and presses it on there if you want to do it that way all right now you can you can kind of think of how you want to position her arms another really kind of cool idea is you could do them like this and actually put a little heart in her hand or a cross or whatever and just kind of put something really nice in her hand they can put them together or you can leave them apart you kind of position the position the arms wherever you want them okay so i need to do one more with that and then once I get the sleeve done, all we got to do really is just do her hands and her hair. And then we'll be ready to rock this out. And then we'll do the painting part. And I got to pay attention to my time today, like I said, because I got a lot of good good girls uh, right after me doing some fun stuff. Let's see, can we stop talking for a second so you can actually concentrate? <laughs> you guys, I know me. I like to jab a little bit. So let's talk about angels. Let me get off. Got off me unless everybody got some angel stories or they want to share something about angels um i'd like to hear what you got i mean I, like i said i have my artifacts where i talk a little bit about the subject that i'm that i'm teaching um but i'd like to hear what everybody has has to say before i uh kind of pipe in with what i got going on what do you what do you know about angels as far as biblically i'm kind of going in the biblical stance because, um, I mean, God created angels, and there's a host of heavenly angels, and angels are pretty darn cool. They're his servants. Um, there's guardian angels. There's warrior angels. Um, you know, we know about some of the biblical angels. Michael, the archangel, he's more of a warrior angel. And then we have, um, you know, the messenger Gabriel. He was a messenger angel. But what other kind of angels are you guys aware of out there? What do you... What do you guys know about angels? All right. Except for the fact that most of us creatives love angels. 
we like to make them we like to create them they think they're beautiful there's lots of stories about angels i don't really like that one that needs to be a little little smaller at the top one thing that's beautiful about clay is you just manipulate it the way you need it and get it to where you want it all right so just make sure that you put that seam her seam on the back of her arm there okay and then i kind of flatten these out she looks a little bit like a bruiser in her shoulder there so you can always just manipulate that to where you like it get a little bit thinner you don't want her to have big old big old shoulders i'm seeing her because obviously i'm making this into a female angels but hey you know what the biblical angels have been male so um you know i don't really know are there male and female angels bible does not say basically all the ones that they mention are male so anybody got any ideas about that as far as are there female angels in heaven I don't know okay so anyway there we go so we got her body and like I said I'm leaving her a little rustic on purpose because I really like that if I really wanted to clean her up then I would clean her up a little bit better with the polymer clay so we got her head we got her robe we got uh, hands let's get her some hands on the hands are very simple it's just a little pinch of clay they're nothing they're nothing really fancy I just kind of pinch a little bit like that and kind of flatten it out and then I'm just going to stick them right in there. Okay. They're not, I'm not doing fingers. I mean, if you really want to get very detailed, you know, we can go through all that, but that's not what we're doing here. We're just kind of getting a simple figure shape. Okay. And I'm going to stick that one right in there too. Just make sure that it does stick. You can actually press her little, her little uh, sleeves down on top of it a little bit. Okay. There you go. So that's that one. Like I said, you can always play with the robe a little bit more if you want to. And also, you want to just make sure you got a little bit of that neckline showing there. You kind of press that down. Okay. Now, her hair. Last thing here. So here's her hair. We saw that we just did that with the extruder. All right. So I'm just going to take a, a section where I think and just kind of press it on. All right, then you can make it. Obviously, I don't think I want it this long. I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Uh, you know what? That knot, I don't know about that knot. I'm going to move this over. I don't think I want the knot after all. But I'm just pressing her hair down to her head. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut that knot out. It looks kind of cool in a sense, honestly, but I think I'm going to just take it out. All right. And I'm just kind of putting her hair, you know, it's so hard to see, guys, I'm sorry, putting her hair, like, around her face to kind of cover up, uh, you know, some of the stuff on her shoulders and whatnot. Ooh, I kind of like that really long strand. Maybe I'll leave it, like, really long like that on that one side. You guys think about that. You like the long strand? Wings are the Ark of, oh, Wings were over the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, they were, actually. The wings of the, um, those, those were the cherubs, I believe, right? They were like the um, guardians, or not guardians, but um, the overseers or whatever. All right, so I'm going to take an extra little strand of her hair here, and all I'm going to do is uh, cut a little piece of this off to kind of make a bang in the front. I like to kind of have her head covered up so, a little bit more, and it kind of creates a little bit of depth on her, too. If you guys can see that and see where am I going to cut that off I'm just going to cut that off about right here all right so uh, let me ask you do you guys think this looks hard to do as far as working with this clay or does it look like it would be pretty easy for you to do sculpture doing 3d I actually add my add a little bit of extra strand on her hair there to kind of make her full I think I'll just fill it out why not We'll fill our hair out nice and full today. All right. There you go. That was actually pretty easy, right? You just kind of pop it on and squish it down. <laughs> oh, I've got a little funky spot over here that I don't like. So I'm going to mess with that. I just kind of pulled it off. It's really easy to make the hair, especially with that little extruder. Extractor. Why do I keep calling it an extruder? I don't know. Okay. So there you go. We basically got our angel. Okay, what do you think? 
it actually is pretty easy, Mary. It's not hard. I mean, like I said, the you have to, you know, you do definitely need to have the pasta maker for that. You could roll it out. You could actually, you could roll. If you don't have a pasta maker, any of this stuff can be done without having the gadgets. You don't need an ex extractor. It makes it really quick and easy. But you could, I, the first one I did, this one here, I literally rolled her hair out by hand. Okay, did little strands and I cut them and put them on there. Um, the, the robe too, you could take the robe and you could um, roll it out really nice and thin and just cut it to size and put it on there as well. Okay, so here we go. This is our basic unbaked angel. And I like the long hair. Like I said, I think I'm going to leave this really long strand on there. The other ones I cut a lot shorter, but that looks really cool. I wasn't going to bake her, but I might go ahead and bake her. That means I'll have three of them. All right. So anyway, she's ready to go in the oven, 275 for about 30 minutes. Let her cool down in the oven. All right. So now I do have my other one here that I'm going to do the presenter's magic with, and we're going to paint this little puppy. Okay. I know I've got to watch my time. I am, I'm on that. So the painting actually goes really easy. Excuse me. I had to walk away because I forgot that I needed to get my little, my pizza pan. <laughs> this is what I paint on these days because it's just so, um, with this glass, like I said, it makes everything glare and it just kind of works. You know, it's black and dark and I'm going to put this underneath too to help it even a little bit better with the lighting. I think it helps. Okay. So to paint her, she actually paints up really easily. Uh, question, uh, what temperature do you bake at? Deborah's asking. And what kind of clay, what kind of clay is that? Okay, Deborah, it is, I work with primarily polymer clay, which is a, um, da, 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 da. it is a plastic based clay and it's Sculpey. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with Sculpey. This particular one is the Sculpey 3. It's very, uh, it's a very soft, pliable, kind of a sticky clay. Um, like I said, you can use, I usually have my cornstarch out. I forgot to pull it out. But um, you can use cornstarch and kind of help to keep the stickiness off your hands, but you don't want to do that too much because it does need to have a little stickability. Um, there are different brands of Sculpey. I do work with others. As a matter of fact, I, before I paint this, I need to do this. Hello, Kim. Okay. One thing I failed to mention is that I actually have a, a private membership called Mud Clay Art. It's on Facebook, and I have a private group where I um, teach people how to work with polymer clay. And I would love to have anybody want to go over there and join in on the group. It's only $15 a month through the end of the year. Starting in January, I am going to increase the price. It is a private membership group, but we do monthly projects. Um, I do um, uh I do like many projects during the month, to, is, which is kind of like a member's choice. They get to pick what they want, and I do a little video on that. I do a, a showcase with the members after we make the project, and I do happy mail and all kinds of really cool things. So we learn a, little, a lot about polymer clay, and it is more of a beginner or maybe intermediate, but we do some really awesome things in there. It's not just um, – I mean, these things are great, and I like, but I do like more uh, sometimes um, – functional things for your home, you know, I mean, soap holders, little things like that, or some really fun, really unique, beautiful projects. So, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. It's called Mud Clay Art. And if you're interested, you know, send me privately on that and I'll give you information on that. I didn't put it in the link or anything because I'm so lame about doing that stuff. I just, I need to get better with my marketing. Anyway, you're doing fine with your time. You're like, oh, it's only 40 minutes. Oh, you're right. I'm looking at the time. I'm good. Sweet. I'll probably be under an hour on this one. That's great. Okay, so la, 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 painting. So this one here, I absolutely love the coloring. I love, I'm really into aquas and the turquoise and all that, and I added some green metallic. <clears throat> now I'm going to ask you, um, I could repaint one similar to this if you guys want to see how I did the coloring on this. However, uh, since I had, do have a second one, um, I was thinking about doing some little different coloring. I was thinking more of doing um, kind of a burgundy and doing like a little bit of the metallic red over top since it's more Christmassy. Um, and add maybe like a little bit of this mustard in there with it as well. Okay, so those are the choices. I will do whatever you guys or whatever you ladies tell me to do. I'll leave her paint it similar 
to what this one is here, this original one here, or I can do it with my, um, my red tones. So if anybody doesn't pipe in the next couple minutes, I'm going to go ahead and go with or a couple seconds. Even I'm going to go ahead and go with the red just because I'll have something different when I'm doing two of something, when you're creating, when you're doing online like this, you have to have one pre-made. Oh, and by the way, um, as far as the backing goes, I mean, you know, she, oh, she says do red. Thank you, Tammy. Um, so, okay. So you can see here, I've got her on a little star. <clears throat> and all I did was this was, I think I actually used um, stain on this, but you could do a paint wash on it too. Just water down your acrylics. And then you could do a, a wash on there. Now, this is just my idea. These are just the little guys from the Dollar Tree. Nothing fancy, but it's a nice little backing for this. Um, I was, I have a heart. I have a cross. I wasn't going to put the angel on the cross. That felt a little weird because that's where Jesus was. So, um, but I did do, like I said, um, this one here with the star. And you can really color up the star, make it very colorful. But I'm kind of keeping it in that rustic <laughs> kind of feel. So, Anyway, use whatever backing you have, but I thought that was a good idea. And I, you know, obviously people know what these are, but here's a plain one right here. I'm not going to decorate this one. I figured that could be your creator's um, license to do whatever you want to with that. But I just kind of showed you, you know, what you can do. And that's a simple, inexpensive way to put a little backing in a hanger to hang her up if you want. Or you can do whatever you want to it. Now, I told you I was going to show you the back of this thing. This is unpainted. See what it looks like on the back? It's really not that attractive. If you want to make it attractive, one thing about Sculpey that's cool to know is that, it. okay, she's already been baked, of course, so she's nice and hard. Um, but if you needed to add something onto Sculpey, you can literally put a piece of this on the back and rebake it. You can bake it twice, okay? That's kind of cool to know. Um, and you could finish that out really pretty if you wanted to have it like a hanging ornament that by itself that you wanted people to be able to see the back. And see, I, I didn't do the back end on the wings or anything like that. So a person could technically, if you wanted to have it on the back after we did that heart, you could turn and roll your um, your stencil or whatever or your doily twice on the front and the back and then put it on, and that way you would finish off your back real nice, okay? Just FYI, in case you wanted to have the back looking good, especially if it's a gift and you want it to hang, you know, singularly by itself without any kind of backing. Okay, let's go. We're going to go with red. Cool to know you can, yes, you can. You can actually bank it multiple times. And actually, I think it makes it stronger the more you bake it. All right, so this is an experiment, ladies. I've never actually done these colors together, so we're going to pray that they turn out well. <laughs> I think they'll be fine, though. I think they'll be pretty good. I don't know about the ochre with it, but I think the ochre and the red is going to give it a little bit of just variation. I, I usually water these down quite a bit. That's the that's the trick. Uh, not the metallics, of course, because they're already pretty transparent. I, I need to get me a, some sort of brush here. I guess I'm just going to go with my flat brush right now because it's pretty easy. Excuse the airplane overhead if anybody can hear that. I don't know. I swear, usually it's pretty quiet in my neighborhood, but it's a Saturday morning. We have an airport close by. They do uh, skydiving, and which is something I'm, it's on my bucket list one of these days. I might try that. Anybody ever skydive before? I'm kind of getting off topic, but yeah, it's kind of cool. I've, I've done a uh, job. Bungee jump, not bungee jumping, uh, zip lining, zip lining. That was really fun. Okay, here we go. Back to this. All right, so I'm just going to water this down. We're going to see what we can get. We're just going to go with the flow, so to speak. Literally go with the flow. Okay, and it's a little bit watery, but that's okay. I don't mind that. It kind of does that with the polymer clay in the beginning. And if it is a little bit watery, then you just add a little bit more to it. You get it to where the consistency that you like. Now, one of the things I like to do with a lot of these, if you've seen me do some of my other, see that one's a little bit, I got to put a little bit more color on there. Um, with the, the clay is I like to distress them a lot of times. I didn't actually distress these simply because I used a little touch of brown while when I did that, um, when I did that um, aqua colored one, I just put a little brown touch in there. And I might do that on this one just to give it a little bit of it because, you know, the distress actually helps bring out the, the textures, like in the wings and whatnot. Okay. All right. So this is a little bit right in here getting in. The, I just kind of dab it. I went in there and dabbed it very gently. 
because you know you've got all those you got her hair to deal with here okay and I'm just kind of sort of dabbing and stroking so you can get most of that in there let me add a little bit of this yellow and see what happens with that oh lordy here comes Robert he's walking in here what'd you bring me he brought me a drink Oh, I kind of like the yellow with that. It's kind of turned a little orange, but that's okay. I don't mind that so much. Oh, my goodness. He, he brought me a really awesome drink, you guys. Is that mango? No, it's uh, cantaloupe. Mm. Cantaloupe drink from the Mexican store. Thank you, sweetheart. You guys ever had one of those? Hey, Debbie. Oh, my God. That those, These cantaloupe drinks are the bomb, by the way. They're, they're all made with fresh cantaloupe. They blend it up. They're really good. Thank you for joining in, Deb. I'm, I'm getting to the very end of this thing, but uh, what we're I'm, I'm painting up this little angel here. And I think I need a little bit more paint on in here. It's good to have you, Deb. How's your morning going? Robert, would you turn that fan on for me? Turn the fan on, please. I'm getting a little hot. Believe it or not, I'm actually getting hot here. Is anybody jealous? Because <laughs> I'm actually getting hot in November. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm just, I'm going to town with a little bit of red tone here. She's kind of, turned out to kind of pink, but you know what? That's not too bad either. All right. I think I'm going to add a little bit of brown in here. I want to take it down a little bit. Okay. Robert just turned on the fan for me in here. I... If it gets a little bit too loud, then let me know, and I'll turn it down a little bit. But So basically, you can see, I'm just sort of making a little bit of a hot mess on it right now. And that's kind of the way I like it. I really wanted it just to blend like that. I mean, it just looks so pretty to me. And then once it dries, of course, you'll be able to do your metallics over it which I will do in the, here in a second once I get her coated. I can get her in there and get her all painted up. I think I'm going to have to switch my brush to a little bit of a thinner brush. I mean, like a round brush, so I can kind of get all in those little edges in there. Painting with the three-dimensional is definitely a little bit more sometimes of a challenge because of trying to get into areas like that. Let me go with the little smaller brush here, and I think I might be able to get in those other little areas. There we go. All right. Thanks for the drink. I appreciate it. Yeah, you have to go back and watch the first. Yeah. All right. Let me get a little bit more paint in there. <laughs> All right. So how about some more stuff on angels when I'm getting her painted up here? All right, so let me see. I'll go to some of my artifacts if people don't want to actually pipe in what they know about, but biblically, what angels are about. Did you know that the Bible mentions that there are, mentions angels 270 times? I didn't even know that. I know that it was mentioned that much. Jesus talks about angels, too. He talks about angels as far as, like, protecting the little kids. Where is that at? I believe that's in... Um, no, I'm trying to figure out what scripture that is. He talks about angels to the, about the children. How the, the angels protect the children. Well, good night, Kim. I'm having the hardest time getting up in there, and usually I didn't have that much time. Oh, well. It does fill in. <laughs> but you know what? The last bit of hair I think I did on the other one, I had it more like off to the side. I didn't have her down in here. That's all right. Let me go ahead and blow this one, dry her up a little bit, and see what we're looking at. Then I can always finish her up in the end. I don't want to have to take up too much time because I do want to get the metallic on there and see what the metallic looks like with it. And I want to put a little bit of yellow in there as well. Hold up a second. I'm going to put the blow dryer on here. So, oh, my heat gun. Never mind. I guess I won't do that because I took my heat gun with me to uh, Orlando, which by the way, the last couple of days I've been working in Orlando 
and I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I was working, uh, doing some, helping these people do, like a team of people, recreate like vacation homes in a space theme with mural work and things like that. But I just realized I'm too old for that stuff. <laughs> I just, it was too much for me. There's a lot of like climbing ladders and ceiling work and, and it's really cool and fun and game rooms and everything. But I'm like, you know what? I, that was back in my day and I was just kind of to let that go. So, and it was a two to two and a half ride back in, well, on the way home from Orlando, the traffic's absolutely horrendous. So uh -uh. I said, no, nope, I'm not doing this. It's, it's crazy. But I gave it a try. I gave it a try. All right. So I'm going to call that good for now for the first painting. Hold on, ladies. I am going to get my uh, my blow dryer. It's right here so I can use it because I need to do this to be able to dry her up. Sorry about that. I should have been prepared. I thought I had it already sitting next to me. All right. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and mute just so I don't make a bunch of noise in your ear. Okay, so I'm back. You can kind of see when she gets drier, how she takes on that. I like that effect, honestly. It's a very soft, like, watercolor effect. So as I got some stuff on the side here I didn't touch up before. And like I said, a person can go back and kind of paint her, you know, put a little extra color on her, which um, I will do. You know, I'm not going to take all the time to do that. Uh, by the way, these hair strands are pretty thin. So when you're painting on them, you got to be kind of careful because you might get a little bit of breakage, but there's quite a few on there. So <laughs> if she loses a couple of hair strands, whatever, I think we all lose a little hair here and there. Uh, I find hair in the sink. I'm like, what's going on with my hair? Okay, so she's pretty well done, except for those little areas in there, which I'm really going to have to wing it. I'm going to put a little touch of brown on her. I think she needs a little brown. I just want to tone her down a little bit. I don't want to put too much of that yellow because I don't want her to turn really like orangey, not real orangey. But kind of get a little extra color in there. I don't know. I just like the brown because the brown always just gives it that nice like aged look, you know, a little aged effect going on. The rustic look, right, Mel? Melanie? <laughs> Sorry, Matthew. That's it. Matthew, Debbie, thank you so much. Yes, little children, maybe all of us, children of God. Exactly. It's Matthew. It's funny. Um, oh, this is something I wanted to mention. How many of you ladies are familiar with The Chosen? The Chosen. I absolutely love it. The series about um, the uh, disciples, Jesus and the disciples. I'm absolutely in love with that thing. I've seen every episode. I was one of the initial people that um, donated money as an investor into it. And um, anyway, our church uh, little group, we had a um, we had a um, a little showing on the lawn last night. The first episodes from season two, and that was kind of, like I said, I watch them all the time. I've watched them repeatedly over and over again. But um, they're pretty cool, aren't they? Anybody familiar with the chosen? Love that says I know. I just I did you are you, what about the Christmas one? You know, he's got the Christmas one coming. It's not the one that he first made. They're doing the one in the theaters. I'm like, oh, I wanted to go see it so bad. It's already sold out here. It's already sold out. 
So I don't know if I get, I might have to wait till the freebie to come out, but I was like, oh my gosh, it looks so good. It looks so good. So yeah, that brown, I think just kind of adds a little extra depth to it because it's some dimension. And you know, I can just, matter of fact, sometimes I like to use my fingers. All right, so I'm gonna leave it a little rough like that. I'm gonna mute one more time and then I'm gonna Deborah, if you have not seen The Chosen, you can literally go on your phone and get The Chosen app or go to vidangel.com and go and look for The Chosen app and you can watch all of the episodes. There's two seasons. It's all crowdfunded. It's not funded through Hollywood. It is absolutely amazing. It will just, it's so different and unique from all the other, um, you know, well, I mean, not saying that any of them are bad. I mean, I love, still love the Ten Commandments. I love Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandments, and that was the bomb. Um, but it's just a unique take on what they've done with expanding the personalities of the disciples, and it's really neat. They stick with the biblical principles, but they give all the disciples personalities, and it's, sometimes it's pretty humorous, and it's just really great, and it's like exploded. It's, it's a major thing. So The Chosen, go check it out. I absolutely love it. All right, so I'm just throwing some metallic on top here to give a little shing shing. I got to thinking if a person wanted to, they could put some uh, glitter, you know, put a little um, uh, glitter paint on top of this if you want to make her really glittery and shiny. You can pretty much paint her any way you want. This is just my little technique of kind of making her sort of rustic and whatnot. Looks beautiful. Oh, okay. Robert bought me, he went shopping. He bought me a shirt. Well, that'll be a pretty red shirt for the holidays. Ah, uh, he can be he can be sweet sometimes. Okay. Sweet. Okay. All right. I'm about done here, ladies. But I just kind of oh, I really love metallic. The metallic makes it really shine up nice. Gives it a really pretty look. I'm still gonna have to dig in there and get some of that white area in the Thing, but I love the metallics. She does pretty with the metallics. Okay. Oh, Deborah. Yeah, it looks looks like this. Okay, I have the chosen app from the beginning of the. Oh, you haven't seen the Christmas one. My bad. I got you now. The Christmas one. Um, what it is is that was his first one that he ever did. If he ever talks about it, um, Dallas talks about it a lot. He, the very what kicked off the uh, chosen was he did a Christmas one for his um. It was about the birth of Jesus and uh, the shepherds and whatnot. And it was really, really great. And uh, that was kind of like his pilot. And then he, they decided to do this whole chosen series. But uh, he, what he's doing is if you go on the YouTube or on their Facebook page or whatever, you can see about the Christmas one. It's actually turning into like a full length movie that is going to be in theaters. And they did an entire episode that is like with the characters that are in the chosen like Mary and some of the other characters, they're bringing them into that full length feature in the theaters. And it's really, really cool. I was, they showed the trailer. I'm like, Oh, I want to see it so bad. All right. Anyway. So ladies, here you go. Here is a, a red version. I might end up putting some more Brown on toning her down a little bit. Um, what do you guys think? You like the red or do you like the blue better? I think I'll like her, but I just, like I said, I think I'm going to add a little bit of extra, um, a little bit of extra pump. <laughs> okay. I know Robert's like, <laughs> I just had a photo bomb, guys. <laughs> He's in the background. <laughs> oh, I know what's tall. I'm like, I'm trying to show this and you're like photo bombing my. <laughs> what about my thing? Anyway, guys, all right, let me, I'm going to do this here. Let me switch over. Okay. Yeah, I think more rust tone would look good. Actually, that's not what I want to do. I want to pull her up here. I don't want me. There we go. 
Yeah, I think I will do a little bit more rust tone. I'll work on her a little bit and get the colors toned down because the red is a little bit, a little bit too up there. But I do like the metallic on it. I will say I do like the metallic. And I love the look of her. All right, so ladies, that is pretty much it. Um, I hope that you, it, oh, by the way, if you have any more questions about this or my uh, mud group at all, please just, um, you know, contact me through Messenger and let me, you know, I'll tell you more about what we're doing with the polymer clay, the mud clay art group. And um, I'll have something for you at the end of the month, another really fun holiday thing. And I thank you guys for tuning in and show me some love and shares and all that happy stuff. And I hope everyone has a beautiful weekend. And also uh, coming right up after me is Melanie. Melanie's got some really cool cards she's going to be making. And Terry, Terry Woodhams is one of my paint girls. Robert, darling, honey, you're in the camera. <laughs> He's trying to be helpful. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a good day. I love Little you. Bye-bye. <laughs>